Welcome to Blackpool and the world famous Waterloo Hotel, where top class Crown Green Bowls has been played here since 1907. And it's been on our TV screen since the 1980s. This program will bring you coverage from the final major event of the 2016 season, with the FlowFit Champion of Champions event, where 32 players who have won major events around the country all come together for the feisty finale of World Class Crown Green Bowls. It's always a pretty special atmosphere at Waterloo, and never more so when we have all the best bowlers in the country going head to head in a fantastic day of Crown Green Bowls and a tournament that dates back to 1974. Before we get the action underway, we spoke to John Crowther, Chief Executive of the British Crown Green Bowls Association. It's a fantastic competition. Uh, it's been won by all the greats. We've got people like Noel Burrows, who won, I think it was 78 and 80, still going strong, still winning, still a gentleman, still my hero because he's about my age and still bowling a fantastic standard. Uh, a great admirer of people like him who kept up their form for so many years. But today, what I call the true champion of champions, we started with 32 winners and the cream of the cream is here today. So whoever wins will be a very, very worthy winner. I'm backed up by a lot of people who work hard. The competition organisers, the county secretaries, the open competition organisers, they provide me with the names of the winners. It's been a bit uh, fraught this year, with Gary Ellis winning, I'm not sure it's six competitions he's won, but it's all worked out well, and as I say, it's a fantastic day, and so far, thankfully, the rain has kept off. So I'm really enjoying, the green is fantastic. Obviously, I'm going to say a big thank you to Simon Parsonage and his FlowFit company, who not only sponsored the All Britain in Wales earlier in the year, but sponsoring today, and with the BCGBA and hopefully bowlers wherever they are, either here or at home, are very grateful to Simon and his company for their continued sponsorship. And just a word on it being televised as well, how important is it that you're back on TV for the game of bowls? Yeah, it's very, very important. I think it's shown by the attendance here on Wednesday, the last day of the Waterloo. Uh, I've been coming quite a few years now and I think that was the best crowd that were in here and I think certainly TV coverage has obviously encouraged people to come along. In fact, I heard a tale about one gentleman from the Blackburn area who got on to me and I put him on to someone in North Lanx and I believe the North Lanx have been in touch with him because he's been bitten by the bug just by watching it. So it, it is a big influence and to get it on is a, is a great boost for our great sport. Our well-known commercial officer Mel Evans MBE. As many of you will know, Mel unfortunately is suffering ill health at the moment. We do wish him well. A fantastic gentleman, deservedly gained the MBE for his services the Crown Green Bowls over many years. So we are very, very grateful to Mel. And then we look forward, and I enjoy every minute of it, but as you say, I'll be looking forward very soon to the next year's diary, who plays who, in the Senior County Championship, the Junior County Championship, and that'll keep you busy throughout the winter. Simon Parson is the Chief Executive and the main sponsor of FlowFit. We're getting ready for the final of the 2016 Champion of Champions Tournament. You must be delighted how it's gone and to be involved in it once again. Yeah, we're absolutely delighted once again to be involved. I um, mean, great crowds. Um, there's been some great bowling today. It's going to be a great final. Um, yeah, we're really pleased to be here once again involved. And, and we're, we're also very pleased that the BCGBA wants us involved, so uh, thank you to them. And this particular tournament brings everybody from all around the country, from all parts of the game in British Crown Green geography. And that is key, isn't it? You're giving everybody an opportunity to play at the Waterloo Hotel. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, this competition starts at grassroots in all different counties, um, whether it be in competitions or county merits, um, whether it be in the Isle of Man or down in the, in the suburbs of Shropshire, if you like, and across to... Uh, uh, North Midlands, so yeah, it goes the length and breadth of the central, you know, central part of the country. So, yeah. And when you see crowds like this attending, you know, it must make you feel good. Oh, it's only good for the game. I mean, um, this probably the last few days, I haven't seen crowds like this at the game. Um, I mean, the buzz that's around the game now with with TV involved and so forth is great. I mean, some, you guys know that the, the figures are have, have been quite good in the past. They'll be good again, and the game is definitely on the rise. And we're pleased that you're involved as well with us. So we're into the second round. 
most of the big names are in, but the number two seed Greg Smith and number three seed Graham Wilson both departed the competition, as we saw in our previous shows. The match we'll concentrate on here today is Jonathan Snedden versus Damian Morrison. A real war of the roses here between the man from South Yorkshire, Jonathan Snedden, who won the Crooks Open out in Sheffield, and Damian Morrison, who was the winner of the Lancashire Merit, qualified him through to this competition. Join the action right at the beginning. Damien Morrison might just start slight favourite in this game, Andy Cairns. I would think he does. He's a very experienced bowler for, for a fairly young lad. He's just put out the uh, Waterloo champion, Tim Horton. 21-19 in a, in a titanic tussle. Whereas Jonathan had a bit of an easier route through. He beat uh, Andrew Armstrong, the reigning BCGBA Junior Merit winner 21-14. Both good competitors though. It'd be a, although not really that well known in the bowling world. Very good players in their own right and if they both play to their potential this will be a cracker. So a little bit of interruption from the first delivery of the jack. Had to come back so Morrison sends it out. The second attempt to get the first end underway. And a fairly shortish round peg mark. Front peg to the gutter. Down he goes, looking to get an early length. First port of court. And he's a first aim to get a feel of the green. The one thing in both of these two players' favour, Andy, is that they haven't been off the green too long, have they? There's been one or two games, of course, who went on earlier throughout the day, had to wait a long time. But these two lads have not been off long. Yes, yeah, straight more or less straight back on. They've only been off about 15 minutes, if that. Whether that's good for them or not, I don't know, but uh, we'll see shortly. It looks like Damien settled down a little bit better at the first end, but uh, plenty of room for Jonathan. Sure, he'll improve on his lead ball. Needs to stop anytime soon. Lodge on that. Well, that's helped it. There's no doubt about that. That's the only thing that did stop it because it would have been travelling past and it would have led left Damien Morrison on with the first Looks, score and he's, he's won it yeah he's pointed one down so the man with the red red t-shirt and his blue and white hat in for the first point is the tower looks beautiful absolutely stunning picture of the tower there for you and the crowd here are also getting some stunning viewing of their crown green bowling favourites in this 2016 flow fit champion of champions at the Waterloo Hotel been going back since 1974 ironically the game that we're following is a Lancashire County bowler and Damien Morrison it was won that year by Jimmy Hadfield of Lancashire winning at 21-10 against the British Parks champion that particular year so uh, we're following a Lancashire merit winner and Damien Morrison up against uh, Jonathan Snadden his uh, quiet approach to the game Morrison just stumbled a little bit as he delivered that one it was a little bit of a stumble but he fancies it left the map behind as he got there to count if he gets down the slope it does count wait and see not quite sure for the angles who's going to be counting the second end definitely won't be two because uh, Snedden has picked the, one of his balls up Potting up now the competition, crowd getting more and more vocal with their shouts for their favourite players. The money's been put down from the early morning on their favourites. The one or two have gone by the by, but there's still quite a lot of uh, interest in certain players. And our interest, of course, now is on Damian Morrison against Jonathan Snedden. Jonathan's one of these new breed of bowlers who are uh, very competitive, very confident in their abilities, get after their balls, run after them, very animated and uh, also an excellent striker. Seems to be a common theme developing in the, uh, the younger lads that have taken up the game. A lot of the players today, and a lot of the games that we have uh, covered as well, have been playing shorter marks and this is certainly Snedden's early approach to this particular second round game but this time Damien Morrison 
Finds a better length. Might have just done enough if it falls down in the count one. It's down he goes. Nice action. Jonathan Snedden. Definitely reached. Needs a contact. Not got it. Yeah, got a beautiful delivery, Jonathan. Really, really smooth. Silky smooth. Whereas Damien, I think you said he stumbled off the mat. Well, that's his delivery. It's, uh, yeah. I wouldn't say it was ideal. He almost looks like he's uh, pulling him, pulling his uh, hip out of joint when he's sending a ball. Well, he was on anyway, and he gets his first point on the board. Looks as though it's just a nice little short mark that he's coming down with. Snedden leading by three to one. Seven minutes of the game already done and dusted. In fact. He's short with his lead. Not just good enough that, Jonathan. You'll have to lead a little bit better than that if you want to win. Good yard and a half short of the jack. Damien steps in. And despite him having a red dot on the side of his ball, he's actually playing in blue. Yeah. And <laughs> Jonathan's got red, red uh, stickers on his balls and his little dimple's blue. <laughs> He's got all colours on, hasn't he? He's got a red t-shirt and yeah. a blue and white hat. <laughs> Brilliant. Nothing like helping us out, is there? Just checking that scoreline, it is exactly as we were bringing you in commentary. Steden leads 3-1 against Damien Morrison. And he's striking through at the other peg. Yes, playing through. Good effort, this. Got it, I think. No, oh, just underneath. Speed wouldn't allow it to just uh, curl up at the end. And it went just sailing by. And nice settling down period for... Uh, Jonathan Snedden. Nice well played ball that though. Gave it a chance. Wasn't easy to beat on the just a, playing a, sink, a straight draw, so he decided to play through on the other other peg. And Jonathan's taking him back from where they've just come from. Some peg bias to the ditch. Off the crown, quite a shallow mark, not a lot of peg. Look at him after his ball, urging it on, wafting his arm after it. Damien Morrison in a good view of what's happening with his ball. He likes this one coming in, knows it's going to peg towards the jack. And a uh, nice response from Damien Morrison. We will now make his opponent be reaching up towards the jack here to give himself any chance although he's turned it over has he Andy turned it over playing finger peg Damien's wafting it over the top and he, he will peg away now just missed that ball it's a good effort though yeah, good weight but just couldn't get the uh, the right line so opportunity for Morrison to close the gap he's watching it go down again looks to be on a good route comes inside gets two pearlers cracking balls yeah, nothing up with those Takes one out, looks to be two from where we're positioned. Yes, concedes the end. What will his tactic be, Damien Morrison? What do you think he's looking to, to do? I think he'll, he'll go a distance here. I think he'll, he'll try and go maybe 35 yards. Just take him around the green a little bit. Heading down towards the east side, right down in the bottom corner. Looking to find a lead. It's a fair reach, is this? Pace isn't bad. No. What's the road like? Needs a contact. Gonna go drift away now. Certain areas of the green, Andy, when they go past the jack, they do actually seem to pick up speed, don't they? Well, I know you, you can't see it off that picture, but it's very, very steep behind that jack there. And they will just run away. Anything overplayed. And Morrison looking to take at least two yards out of it. I think he's overcorrected. He's overcorrected. Needs to trickle and it can't. Not happy. Chance for Snedden to get his double back. <laughs> bit of room important that he reaches 
Don't think he's reaching. Only plays with a fairly small ball. Does Jonathan about a 2 8? Left it short. Yeah, just one. Still 5 3. Yeah, that'd be well pleased he settled down well. Hard slot when you give your opponent a good start and their confidence builds to get back in the game. It's a long game, of course, but uh, you've got to try and stay in control of the game. Now he's gone a little bit further this time, leading the jack out. Jonathan Snedden wearing 29. Needs to peg somewhere. It's trying its hardest and never be a good one. Damien's reached. Damien's reached. Good ball. Maybe just a foot short. Slightly tighter the jack, but a decent ball nonetheless. Now then, Jonathan, what are we saying? Needs to peg and then stop. Just gone out. So both players at the moment just find it a little bit difficult to hold on to the jack for a couple of ends. Morris will loop to double up here. Certainly looks to me as though he's uh, doubled up. That's the first ball of the end. So that's two on the scoreboard. Big shout come on Damien. Five all in the second round game of the 2016 Champion of Champions Flow Fit event at the Waterloo Hotel in Blackpool. Great crowd been here all throughout the day. Potting up, getting towards the closing stages, nitty gritty. Quite a few shocks in the early rounds, still a few of the big guns still competing, but the tournament is wide open. Have a lot of support, Will Damien, from his his pals from Warrington and, uh, and that area. A few Lancastrians will no doubt will have invested in him as a merit winner. That's still a highly prestigious uh, title in the game. Well, they produce some players, haven't they, over a long, long spell. I'm sure. I have it. We go back to some of the, the stars and one over there to our right hand side of the moment in the crowd, Brian Duncan. What a player he was as well. Fantastic. <laughs> still, you're right. Still a hot better ball in his Warrington. An awful lot of good ballers playing around there. Very popular place to play balls. Well, we've gone the farthest distance of the game so far. Now, has Morrison got enough in to get past that ball? He has, and he lies two at the moment. Uh, this is Damien's natural sort of length. Likes to reach, likes to send them a fair way. Has he caught Jonathan out? Has he got him playing too far? It looks like it's going to go once it goes past the jack. Can't stop anytime soon. So Morrison grabbing the lead now. Just had a couple of runs with the jack. Feeling a lot better in himself. Looks at the crowd, see if there's any uh, indication for the crowd, any sort of uh, support for him. As Andy said, there's plenty of support for the Lancashire Marriott winner, who goes in front 7-5, leading out right-handed in his blue T-shirt. The man wearing the blue and his number of course is 31 although his number on his back at the moment is not in shot going full corners now long way this some peg just going to go a yard or so past yeah he's given him plenty of room he won't be happy with that lead goes he's turned his back on it for some reason I don't know why but uh, he knows better than what we do in the commentary box but he's not too happy with his first ball a little bit tight a little bit short apart from that it wasn't so bad but shouldn't be good enough this needs to run straight well You'd like to think you can kick one in there, but uh, it's not that easy. All sorts of undulations, you've got to play across, and then get the length. Where's this one going, Jonathan? Well, it's definitely going out. Yeah, that's so, not one it. That's the farthest ball away now then, Morrison. 
need to have good eyesight here to find out who's in without having a measure. They're a long, long way away, but it doesn't matter whether you've got them on top of the jack or a long, long way away. They still count the same, one or two, and he's in fact pointed yeah, one down. One down. Disappointed for him, that. Looks like they've been dropped out of an helicopter <laughs> then, aren't they? So Sneddon is going to win the jack back. A quick look to see whether he might have a chance for two, but threw it in and said, we'll kick those in quickly. 6-7 for Sneddon leading. We've got some help there looking after us. No. We need well, we don't, no, don't know whether we're sounding a little bit groggy now. We need a <laughs> bit of a, a coffee to aliven our voices up. But they're, they're on the way, so we'll uh, we'll have that as our excuse at the moment, Andy. If there's a little bit of a tickle in our throats, and here we are at the Waterloo Hotel, 2016 Champion of Champions, and we're keeping an eye firmly on this game. And it's touch and go again. Very tight start. Very tight opening to the game. Jonathan Snedden just in front, leading out with a good ball, has had Damien Morrison going past the jack. He's leading out 6-7 behind. Not on the road here, not the best of balls, will count, but uh, it's doing its best for him. And this is a mark he played so well in his opening round game against uh, young Andrew Armstrong from Wales. Like you say, he's lay one good one and one average one. Has he it reached? It? He's not reached it. Has he left it? He has indeed. That's a cheap two for Jonathan. Wow. Don't get away with all so often on here. Morrison now, interestingly, has gone. Well, down the middle of the green. More or less probably where his opponent Jonathan Sneddon might have been heading if he'd have been delivering the jump might not have been going that distance but he's gone that that route Andy yeah there's there doesn't seem to be much of a pattern at the minute they're, they're still testing each other out trying to find somewhere they can catch uh, the opponent out short to far narrow whatever but uh, I'm sure it'll settle down to a pattern soon Decent lead from, from Damien. This needs to run a little bit, just trail a little bit more. Yeah, trots back to the mat knowing it's short. Morris is asking the crowd on the right hand side where the pub side of is, is from our commentary position. Who do they think are in? He's had a shout, but then he's asking the referee now to get closer to give him a, a verdict. He just thinks the last yeah, ball's won Last it. ball snuck in. He's just got to play a similar length to his first. Just beats his own, he wins the end. There's a big chance here, a big chance. Can it stop? No, it can't. Well, he reached at the end. I'm not sure what shot he was trying to play there. Even if it hit Jonathan's short ball, it, all it would have done was push it closer. I think Jonathan's played it right here. He's asking Damien to tell him who's in. So yeah. that he definitely knows that if he's won, I don't think there's any danger for him to go for two anyway, but it's uh, going to be interesting whether Damien thinks he's as clear-cut as our match official did when he was asked. Well done, yeah. Damien Morrison, sporting league yeah. points to his opponent. And he really hasn't got any danger, has he, he to no. play for two? No danger at all. He can afford to reach a little bit. Just doesn't want to be short. Criminal if he's left it short. That's a big chance gone missing. Well, it might only be one that is forfeited there but how these games are played you always look back at those twos and that should have been two for Jonathan Snedden it might not mean anything but you never know as you get to the nitty gritty stages 10-8 for Snedden it's when you're 20 apiece Graham those those shots come back to haunt you you think if only I'd reached at that end the number of sleepless nights I've had replaying <laughs> balls in my head. Interestingly now, of course, as we're reaching the uh, closing stages of the second round, the green is not full like it was in our earlier coverage of the uh, Champion of Champions because uh, they will bring out the quarterfinals pretty much all close together. So the players that are left on the green... And they are going to have a choice of wherever they want to go and not a lot of distraction. That's right, it makes a big difference to your play. You can go wherever you want. Nobody's walking across your line. There's no balls getting hit. You don't have to worry about things like that. And Jonathan's played a good ball here. If he just trickles a little bit, just gone tight, that's all. 
Gives Damien uh, something to think about though. Just needs to lose a yard of pace off his last ball and he's going to wait for Glenn just to move out of the way. Yeah, he was in shot there, Glenn Cookson of course, the only game that's left on the green. Two greats there playing that match, Noel Burrows and Glenn Cookson, but that means Damien Morris has been held up a little bit. Here he goes now, right-handed, round peg, giving it plenty of air, hopes he's got the length that will bring it in, but should be enough. Should be OK, this will start trickling down that slope now, should have won it. Jonathan knows that his ball wasn't just near enough. Too much room for a player of Damien's ability. 9-10. Close game. There's been a lot of, lot of close games. There's been a few runaway victories. But uh, this is definitely close at the minute. Can't pick a winner just at this stage. David Morrison going over to the uh, terracing side of the green where the supporters wait patiently to see what his first ball is like. Going well. Yeah, thump peg across the middle of the green looks to be a perfect ball. I don't think he'll want it back. No, certainly won't. First to 21 takes their place into the quarter-finals, of course. Not sure he's reached, Jonathan. No, left it short, so he'll be down quicker. Morrison, knowing he's on, trying to get the second up towards the jack. Trying, to get, trying to get his nose back in front at 11-10. Uh, and he's reached. Yeah. That's a good ball. And he just flicked his own right in front of the jack as well. That makes it hard for Jonathan. He's two down. All he can really do is try and save. If he knew the other over peg the other way in he may have a chance of winning the end but I think if he saves he'll be happy he's round his short ball needs to stop needs to stop don't think it can no two to Morrison well the lead is swinging from either player one minute Snedder's in the lead on the scoreboard now you can see Morrison's in the lead at 11-10 a little bit quieter at the moment with the crowd and we're getting ready for all the quarter-final games coming on but for these players like Sir Snedden and Morrison they're left on the green this is important for them this is their centre stays they know one more sort of performance that they're not happy with and the chance of being the champion could be gone for this year for them Big game this for both players who really want to try and make a name for themselves at the top end of the game and getting to the latter stages of uh, this competition would really, really do them a world of good and that's a great response from Jonathan Snedden. Just going to go 15, 16 inches past the jack but it's on a very tricky mark. Very good ball. Well then, Morris is watching this one, he's off a far better line, if he hasn't gone too far, he wins it for me, but it could drift past, just took a little connection. Oh, he just needed that, stopped in for me, mm. needed that little tickle on the jack. Yeah, he's had a signal from the crowd, that he's one down, Jonathan Snedden. Now don't be short, you can't win short, and he's short. And this will be the last game left on the green now before we reach the quarter-final stage because the other remaining game has just ended in victory for Glyn Cookson. He marches on into the quarter-finals, so this will be the last game to reach the quarter-finals. Now, will it change anything for the players to be the last on the, on the green? It may do, a bit more uh, focus on the players now, they might become a bit more conscious of that, but uh, it, what it does mean is it they can go wherever they want, there's no one to get in their way, there's nobody to disturb them, and they can almost treat it like a final. May just make it that a little bit more important to them. Maybe give it extra impetus and importance. Well, he's going to stretch the distance for me, Morrison. If he can hold on to the jack, I'll be laying a 10-bob note. 
that he goes back in the corners. Remember those days? Nope. Well before my time, I'm afraid, Graham. But I'm amazed to see there's so many of te those ten bob notes in your wallet. <laughs> I thought white fives had gone out of fashion as well. <laughs> well, he has to hold the jack first of all before he can. Then I can get my tip right. He's uh, running it in. The numbers come off his back, and he fancies it. Yeah. Jonathan Snedden, better road as he reached. It's a good ball. Just gone in for my money. Yes, he has. Good ball. So he Needed will, it. Yeah, he will stop Morrison's thought. Although he hasn't conceded the one yet. No. No. Not, Not conceded. No. Measure time. Here we are clutching at straws. Damien Morrison on this measure, hoping that it goes his way. Which is what, of course, they used to yes. use to measure. Years and years ago, yeah. I wouldn't be very good at doing that now with my hands, uh, Andy. Steady hands you used to have to have yeah, to, to cut them. Nip the straw. <laughs> so then, then a lodge it. Yes, they still do it in some parts do of they? the country, yes. Really? Well, he was spot on then because he knew he was on. And uh, the score line now reads 11 12. No, I didn't think so. He looked up this way, but I thought, surely he can't be delivering it in the corners. He doesn't feel as though he wants to go full distance yet, and he hasn't. He's got a 24-yard, 23, 24-yard mark right over the crown, following it up, wants to get it on a little bit. Yeah, this is the sort of mark that he's very good at playing, and also the sort of mark you can't play when there's five games on the green. So, Jonathan's using this... Oh. But this uh, open space to his uh, his benefit. Beautiful, smooth delivery. Yeah, just clipped the ball there to Damien Morrison. He made it pick up speed and go past the jack, and he has a nice ball behind as well. So he's got two similar balls, one about the same distance at the front as the one behind. He lies two at the moment, Jonathan Snedden. Now then, Damien Morrison's playing up the track. Has he got a clear run? It's to miss. He has got what a clear a run. Ball. Terrific. Terrific response there, real pressure on there to keep his nose in front in the game because Jonathan Snedden was going to grab the lead back. Line two good balls, but two to the man in blue. And the Lancashire Merit winner stays in front, Damien Morrison against Jonathan Snedden. Oh, it was only one, Jonathan signalling one. Going finger peg. Northeast corner. All downhill from where they are. Swings now. Good shot that you can see the bend of the ball. Just overplayed and you can see it trickling away past the jack. Fairly subtle green, but that is one area where there's a downhill finish. Jonathan's not really stepped in. No, he hasn't. Morrison crouches down, flicks it out. A few bit of exercises off the footer from Jonathan Stedden just to get himself relaxed, but if he gets the peg, I'm not sure he's going to get the peg. Plenty of room. He's bowling quick. Jonathan Stedden not allowing it time to settle. He wants to get on. He's pushing it on, urging it on. Surely anything past his front ball wins the end. Oh, well, anywhere in Blackpool wins <laughs> the end, to be fair. Very, it's not the sort of mark you normally play on this on a green this size. It's very easy. You come off a green where you normally play 25 yards, but you'll come on this green because it's so big, you'll play 35 yards. It's just it's, it's amazing how many people do that. So those sorts of marks aren't generally played on here. Very difficult. Well, he's gone a bit further than I expected him to do. I expected him to be using the top of the crown, but no, he's gone right. Deep towards the uh, terracing side of the green. So 40 odd yards. Left it. Mm, he has. Left it. Two yards short, maybe more. Needed to reach. Will Damien get caught out? I don't think so. Clear run. Good and now. Nothing up with that. Well, it's nip and tuck. I don't want to be picking out who's going to win this game. Where the player has been able to dominate any part of the game so far. This is reached and needs a connection. Big effort. 
Oof, just missed. Now this could be a big two because if Morrison can claim two here, he'll have a three-point advantage. And there's hardly been any points between them. And that surely is going to be two wherever he finishes. Yeah, that's a cheap two really for Damien. Jonathan, lead not near enough, second ball. Poorly played really, he knew he had to reach but he couldn't afford to be so far over. There may have been uh, something for just trying to beat that ball and cutting the count down. But 15-12, a three chalk lead at this late stage. Could be crucial. All about a lead now. Couple of good ends from Damien and the game's over. Oh. Concentration levels at the highest. Both players. You can see there what David Morrison is thinking before he delivers it. Let me get it down the land and hopefully my length's right. And I can build on this lead at 15-12 in the flow fit. Champion of champions, second round match and aye aye. Happy with that lead. Jonathan Sneddon looks to me off the land and not quite there as well. Left it short, so we'll be looking to get in for a double Morrison and make it his biggest lead advantage in the game if he can count at this end. This looks to me as though Steve. Uh, Steve. Jonathan Sneddon's just uh, lost his length a little bit. He's asking whether it's two, but it is two. Like he just found his right length, Damien Morrison. He's looking away at the crowd, he's giving up, he's too far back. Oh. It doesn't look to me as though it even saves one. Totally overcompensated after his first ball. Left another two, I'm afraid. Not looking good. No, for the first time in the game, there's an advantage. And there's an advantage to the man in blue. The Lancashire Merry winner, Damien Morrison, leads 17-12. And he's closing in on a quarter-final place. And then he would be up against Glyn Cookson. As the first of the quarter-finals get ready to go on. In this Champion of Champions tournament. The green will get busy again soon. <laughs> they don't hang around, do they? Perhaps they've got a date tonight, Strictly Come Dancing or something like that, or they might be going up the tower or tower ballroom, mm, you don't know what they've be. got. Illuminations or anything. There's everything going on in Blackpool. Certainly some good bowling going on at the Waterloo Hotel. There's no doubt about that. And at the moment, Damien Morrison has the upper hand in this game against Jonathan Sneddon. Can he pile the pressure on? Needs to run a little bit. Anything in's good. May have got one, not sure. No, I'm not quite sure from that distance, but to me it looks as though... Don't be short. Don't be short. Morrison will quickly signal if he's in. Yeah. Two. Two. And it looks to me as though Jonathan Sneddon is now finding out how difficult opponent Damien Morrison is as the crowd Look on, watching what's happening in front of them, and they will see the scoreline is really in favour now of Damien Morrison, who leads and is very, very close to seeing off the challenge of Jonathan Sneddon. 19-12 to Damien Morrison as we go into the quarter-final stages of this 2016 trophy. Yeah, it's just gone away from him now, hasn't it? He was looking good, he was in control, he was in contention and then all of a sudden the wheels have fallen off, a lot of twos have been given away and unfortunately I think it may be too far back for him to get into the last eight of the 2016 floor for champion of champions. Well that's a poor lead from Damien Morrison. Has he reached? He hasn't reached. He hasn't capitalised on it. Looks like his lens totally deserted him at this stage. Well, Morrison will go closer towards game with a good one on here. But not sure he's played a good one. He hasn't. Well, there's nothing in. <laughs> there's nothing in. I'd almost back you to beat those two, Graham. Well, 
and I'm not sure whether that could happen <laughs> and he anymore he's given it up already but surely it's no just, it must win it must win can't go out even us with all judgment can take that can't lose if it goes in it can't go out I know That's that right. <laughs> one to Snedden at least he's broken uh, the run of Damien Morrison which has come at the right time for Morrison of course to be two within victory thinking about where he's going to go he hasn't got a lot of room for error though now unfortunately the man from Yorkshire short mark to the centre of the green yeah, playing thumb peg just off the crown not a lot of bias though it doesn't peg an awful lot 28 yards something like that won't be so bad but it's not really near enough I don't think it'll put Damien under much pressure Seems to be when he catches him out short. I think he has. He has. Well, he's got to double up. There's no room for just playing a nothing ball with his second. He has to put two in the, the area of the jack, and he has done one either side. Not so bad. No. Got to do adjust a lot here, Damien Morrison. Well. Looks better. Yeah. Yeah. Misses it. Leaves two. Leaves two for me. Yeah, and two. 1519. Is there a comeback on as you see the trophy right in front of our screen there that they're playing for? The Champion of Champions trophy. Some fantastic names on this particular trophy. Of course, last year's winner, Callum Rate, couldn't defend his title in this particular competition. Was in the final day, but failed and went out in the second round. There's still a long, long way to go before somebody lifts that trophy. Can he find the lead? He's off and running now. He's just got a little sniff that he's back in the game. Like a shark smelling blood. <laughs> but that's not near enough, I'm afraid. Needs to be closer. Needs to put the pressure right on Damien. Is he in the back? He's just going to miss it. Well, Gray's passed it. Yeah, it. Makes it even difficult now because there are two on the route that he has to get round. He might even think about turning over, which will be a big decision because knowing if he gets it wrong, David Morrison will double up and it could be all over. But he has turned it over, Andy. Needs a length. Needs a length. Needs to run. Look short to me may have just gone in i would be very surprised if he does I think Morrison will be playing up on his own get a connection yeah. well, missed it very right he's missed just it, gone in yeah so edges a little bit closer right ball though if he'd have hit his own full he would have made two yeah and he would have been into the quarter by that trophy he's gleaming down there in shot a flow fit 2016 champion of champions trophy awaits the winner of a very very high quality field that started out with 32 runners and some fantastic players but, uh, Damien Morrison leads 19 16 Snedden leading out the jack played one probably two foot short so he's given Morrison room to try and get past it looks to be past it for me if he gets a clear run yes he's got a great reply and that's one towards 21 as they say 19 he is Snedden has his second ball to deliver now and he's up at it there's no doubt about that this isn't short gets a connection doesn't knock it in room opens up for Damien Morrison he's saying to the crowd you come and send it somebody <laughs> said get another get another yeah, that's easy <laughs> easy done <laughs> just do what you did before it's that simple here goes Morrison is this the end of the game for him Looking to go into good. the quarter-final looks to be as though he's going to go through and one out, oh. or has he stopped? What is gone it? out for me. Jonathan Snedden takes one out. Thinks he's got another end to have a little go. Yes, not signal, not kick them in, but still looking, not quite sure. Morrison looks 
pinned his eyes on taking a real glance now and who's in measure certainty measuring for 21 or will it be 2016 in Morrison's favour from our commentary position it doesn't look a measure but uh, we are oh, 30 yards away hmm. well we'll soon find out Andy still grey overcast day but dry and the green plane in fantastic condition for the bowlers we wait for this measure yeah. one down Morrison I shrugs his shoulders and thought he was in I didn't think my eyes had gone just yet <laughs> So Morrison leads out, leading 2016. First to 21, as you know, will get through in this game to play Glyn Cookson in the quarter final. Down goes Morrison. They had a particularly poor end last time they played down here. As he learnt from that, as he left his ball short of the jack with the lead. No, but it's not so bad. No, it isn't, because he has managed to stop before he reaches towards the edge of the green. So he's testing Jonathan Sneddon, who... Has turned over. Has turned over, and if he's found it, he's won it. Good oh, ball. terrific turnover. Good now, ball. will Morrison go the same way? I think so. Yeah, good Good idea, just reach up at it. Couple of yard over, contact on anything, but it's just over the bar. Now then, needs to get another. If he's going to win this game, he needs to take these opportunities. Playing some peg, not a lot of danger as long as he's not vastly overplayed. He just needs to run a little bit. He looks the right route. Oh, what a sure. road. He's just oh, going to get there. What a road. If he'd have been quick enough with a little bit of the use of the foot there, he might have just eased <laughs> it in, but he wasn't no. just quite quick enough. Anyway, one to Jonathan Snedden. I think and he would have had to have kicked, yeah. kicked it to get that one in. He's still in the game and uh, no room for error, of course. He knows that Morrison only wants one, but he's leading the jack out. And that is always an advantage. Although they do say the last ball is always worth its weight in goal to be sending at an end. But he's after this one for a good lead. Thoughts, Andy Cairns? It's not a bad one. Never going to be a bad one. Look at that. That's a good lead. Another three of those will be, will be nice. Well, he's putting some pressure on him now. Got to make sure he reaches with his first. Needs to pass the jack, because he'll just end up getting in the way. Well, the interesting thing about that is how it lies. If he made a contact, I don't know where this second ball is going to go, Jonathan Snowden. But if he did make a contact, he'd come towards his blue ball, wouldn't it? Yes, he, do, he, ne he needs to get past the end if he can. And can, that'd be good. Well, he hasn't counted, but it could well, be. Well, it a could good, be all right. Yeah, there. could be a good position. I think he's got a strike. I think he's got a strike on the finger peg and try and slice the ball out to the side, and he's got a strike ball through the gap. Well, he's played at it, but not a real strong strike. I'm uh, sure he's played it's short. Nothing. It's a nothing ball. I'm not exactly sure what he thought he was playing there. That's that's just a waste. He should have carried it. He got in four minds, not two minds, and uh, disappointment. One more for Snedden on the scorecard. Need to give your balls a chance, especially if you have a, a chance of getting game. You certainly can't move anything short. I think he was a little bit worried that he might have left two. I mean, that's what he might have been worried about, although he would be disappointed of what he actually played. But if he had a left two, he'd have known that Snedden could have been out at one end like himself. But anyway, it's about the next end now. And this is one of the longest games we've had. We're closing in on 50 minutes, Andy. 50 minutes. Feels like a lifetime. <laughs> Been a good game, though, absorbing to watch. Been some poor bowling, some very, very good bowling. And everything else in between. This is a, this is a decent ball. Just going to go behind the jack. Just, mm, shouting for tapes, it's a mark for me. And uh, I always wonder whether it's just getting a little bit of nervous tension time for Damien Morrison. But to me, my money's on it being a mark, Andy. Very possibly just a tactic to slow Jonathan down. He's suddenly started playing well. He's, he was uh, struggling earlier with his length. Wasn't playing well. And now all of a sudden he's standing them all over the jack. And sometimes you've just got to slow your opponent down, put them out of the rhythm. 
And it also helps know how far you're sending your boat, of course. Well, there we are. Well and Mark, it's well. two metres over, 21 metres at least. Well, let's see whether that's uh, distracted Damien Morrison by himself calling for the tape. Looks to have reached and going way past the jack. It's going out. Certainly has. Wow. Game changing here. Yeah. Sense game changing. A little bit of tension in the arm, maybe. Snedden going down nicely. Going to lie to the two pearlers. Are they too close? Because I think this does need a clearing strike. Well, it's come the other way. It's turned over. Thumb peg. Any movement's good. Is he movement? He's, He's done it. He's done it. Off the ball, onto the jack, to his own back ball. To clinch the single in needed for the 21 18 win. Well, will Jonathan Snedden think he went too close with the second ball to give a big target? That will remain to be answered from Jonathan Snedden, but he had to go for two. And in the end, Morrison got the right connection and just managed to survive a late, late comeback from Jonathan Snedden to win the game 21 18 to move into the quarterfinals of the Champion of Champions Flow Fit Tournament here at the Blackpool Waterloo. 21 18 for Damian Morrison. So a really tight match, but Damien Morrison comes through and the Lancashire man progresses through to the quarterfinals. Some pretty big names in those quarterfinals. Noel Burrows, the man who won this event twice in 78 and 80. He went out 21-14 to Glyn Cookson and also a major shot towards the top of the screen with Callum Ray, the defending champion, losing out in spectacular fashion by 21 points to three against Leighton Roberts. Next time we will be bringing you all the action from the quarter-final between Simon Coop from North Lancashire and Fylde, who won this event in 2014, and he's up against Jimmy Hines. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.